welcome to another House of Wisdom Knife Review video. Today we have a special treat. We're going to look at the Brown Knives Exponent, which is an excellent knife. Craig Brown is a knife maker from Washington State, and the Exponent is his third stab at making a knife design. The first one was the Parabolic, which was an integral knife. The second one was the Servo, which is a traditional frame lock flipper. And now with the Exponent, he's taken a stab at making a, a frame lock front flipper, and he did a great job. How do you order one of these? Well, you go to his website and request to be placed on his mailing list. Weekly, he's selling about 10 knives these days. So you get on his mailing list, and he tells you whenever a, a drop is going to be on his website. And then you go there, and if you're the first one to sign up for one, usually all 10 knives are gone in 10 minutes. The ones that go almost immediately are the lower cost ones, and then the ones that have Timascus and cost $1,000 or more usually go toward the end. But yeah, you can get one just depending on how much you want to pay and if you can get there on time. We'll talk about the specifications of this knife. The, bl the blade length on the exponent is 3.3 inches. The handle length 4.2 inches, and the total knife length is 7.5 inches. The weight of the knife is only 2.8 ounces. In comparison to the Spyderco Para 3, it is a bit longer. In comparison to the Benchmade Bug Out, the blade is longer, but the knife is similar in size. And in comparison to the Zero Tolerance 0450, it is a little longer also both in blade and in handle length. The, the blade of the knife is a drop point blade made out of CPM 154 steel. It has a stone washed mirror polished finish. The blade stock used is 150 thousandths in thickness. There's no sharpening choil on the knife. I just point this out. He didn't intentionally didn't sharpen this point where a sharpening choil would normally go so that yes, you can touch the blade. No, it won't cut you. The blade has a dramatic plunge grind, which is really aesthetically pleasing. I don't think it's really going to be affecting the cutting length. The effect of cutting length starts here. Remember, this part remains unsharpened, and uh, it uh, will still cut during that that phase. There's not such a dramatic curve there that it would affect its ability to cut in my opinion. There is jimping on the spine which gives you good purchase. I want to point out that the jimping on the spine is similar to the jimping on the back spacer which is similar to the jimping on the clip. Nice artistic theme continuity. The method of deployment on the knife is by front flipper. There are three ways to deploy the knife. The first is with the uh, leading edge of your thumb. And the second is putting your thumb pad right on the flipper and then getting it like that. And then if you have long fingers, which I don't, you can reach over and you can deploy it like that. I'm going to compare this with the flipper tab configuration of various other knives. We'll start with the Gareth Bull Shamwari. As you can tell, this one is more forward and less on the inferior aspect of the knife. The Shamwari is inferior, so it's a little easier to get onto that flipper, but then you can't do it on the top side. The next knife I want to compare to is the Chalinor Hornet. Again, it has a prominence on the lower side, so when you do the side thumb aspect, it's easy to flip, but it doesn't come out front of the knife like the exponent. Next South African we have is the Trevor Burger EXK. And again, you can get it on the lower aspect here, but it doesn't come out front like the exponent. And lastly, I have a US Maker, the Olamic Busker. This one is the most prominent front flipper and the easiest to catch with your thumb. Again, it's just a difference in the geometry of the front flippers. I just wanted to give you some comparisons. Having said that, this is an easy knife to deploy once you get used to it. Know where to put your thumb. The handle of the knife comes in four versions. Mine is the milling pattern number one, which has these six fenestrations on the clip side, excuse me, on the show side. And then note that the pivot is in a similar pattern and width 
as the fenestrations on the handle. It also comes in a solid version, a version with inlays, and uh, a version with ridges. Note that the holes have some internal milling and polishing, and they're chamfered. The inside of the knife has extensive milling, as you can see, which adds to its lightness. And all of the edges on the handle are chamfered so that there are no sharp edges. It's very uh, comfortable in your hand. The back spacer has a small back spacer held by one screw and has the gear pattern which matches the clip and the spine of the blade as I've mentioned. It's great, it's functional, and it's minimalistic. The lock on the blade is a frame lock and has maybe a 10% lockup. There are generous relief cuts so that it's easy to disengage the uh, frame lock. And there is an over-travel stop and a stainless steel insert interfacing with the blade tang. The pivot on the knife is a captive pivot, which is, as I've mentioned, similar to the fenestrations in the knife. That's nice because you can just, on the clip side, disassemble the knife with one Torx bit. You don't have to have one to uh, secure the pivot. The pivot itself runs on a dual row bearing system, much like the uh, Shear Gorf, which has the multi row bearing system and the double row IKBS system of Thorburn. Craig Brown came up with his own double row system, and the more bearings, the smoother the action. Speaking of action, this knife has it. It has a smooth drop shut action, just false shut. It's really nice. And the ergonomics of the knife are, not, are great because everything is chamfered. It fits in your hand like a glove. The signage on the knife is minimal. It has on the clip uh, Craig Brown's Maker Marks, which are these arrows. And then on the inside, it has the word on the lock bar. It has the word, see if we can focus there, it has the word exponent. And then the knife number, which for me is number 84. This is the 84th exponent ever made. And the construction, it's simple. It has one pivot and one screw to hold the backspacer. The uh, uh, clip is held by internal screws, so it's a very simple, beautiful, clean design with minimal signage, most of which is on the inside of the knife. So, What do I think about the Craig Brown Knives Exponent? I really like it. Are there opportunities for improvement? The only thing I can think of is this little part here where a choil normally would be, which is just left unsharpened. You can actually touch the blade, but it's not a sharp point. And that's not really a problem functionally. I think it's just one of artistic design. Just be sure if you purchase one of these knives, only sharpen it to the point that Craig Brown sharpened it to. Don't sharpen it over here or you might cut yourself. What do I like about the knife? I like its lightness. It only weighs 2.8 ounces, due in part to its light, sleek design and extensive internal milling. I also like the action. This knife has a world-class action and has become my new favorite fidget choy, which is a, a coveted position in my knife collection. I've already put out my uh, review on the 10 smoothest knives, but had I to do it again and had this knife, this would definitely be in my top 10 smoothest knives. The action on this knife is world class. And I also like the way that they did the captive pivot. I like captive pivots in general, but I like the way that he melded it with the artistic theme, at least of the fenestrations. He made the pivot the exact dimensions of the holes he has in the side. Also with the gear pattern, the same pattern that's on the spine of the blade is on the clip, which is on the back spacer. And they're all similarly colored. It's a nice, nice artistic thing. So in summary, the Brown Knives Exponent is a world-class front flipper. I highly recommend it. I think you're going to like it. Well, hit the like button and sign up for my uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom knife review video. Thank you.